All right, guys, today we're going to talk about 121st G. A couple ways to make this weld. One is we can have the rod in the lightsaber position. Just kidding, that's not a real position. There's not that many of them. When you first start off welding, it can be difficult to discern between all the different numbers and letters for welding positions out there. So today we're gonna to talk about all the different welding positions, what the letters and numbers mean, and what rod angle and body position you should have when you weld them. So if every welding position has a number and a letter. The number indicates what position the weld is going to be made in. We'll start out with a fillet weld. This is a fillet weld. Plate comes perpendicular to another plate. We're gonna start out in 1F. If the letter is F, then it's a fillet, and if the letter is a G, then it's a groove. So a 1F is in this position here, where the weld is on top of the two perpendicular plates. And then if we turn it like this, that's a two. And if we turn it like this, that's a three. And then if we flip it upside down, that's a four. So an easy way to remember this is the harder it is to weld, the higher the number. Now that we're done with fillets, we're moving on to groove welds. This would be a 1G. The G stands for groove. Then this would be a 2G. And then if we spin it so that we're welding vertically, that would be a 3G. And if we flip it upside down, that would be a 4G. Now that we're done with plate, we're into pipe. Pipe has some complications with it because if a pipe is sitting like this, then we have a 4G on bottom, a 3G on the side, and a 1G on the top. So we have a new name for this one. It's a 5G, which means that we're gonna weld all the way around the pipe while it sits in this position here. But if we stand the pipe up, we go back to a 2G. The only difference is we're gonna go around the pipe and not in a straight line. So now if the pipe's at a 45 degree angle, that's called a 6G. The only time that you really are going to do a 6G weld for the most part is if you're taking a test. Almost every test is in the 6G position because if you do a 6G weld, then you're qualified to weld 5G and 2G. So now rolling into the F positions, where would you use those? Well, if you have a pipe stand coming into the bottom of a piece of pipe, or if you weld an OLED onto the side of a piece of pipe, if you have a flange that's a socket weld or a slip-on, those are all gonna be F welds. Those are gonna be in all the same positions as the G welds. So now that we went over F and G positions, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna go over different rod angles because when you're out in the field and you're working on all the different positions, you're gonna need different rod angles to make different welds. All right, let's quick go over the different positions in the stinger. Inside of a stinger, there's a position that holds your rod at a 90 degree angle. And then if you move it up into the next slot, there's a position that holds the rod down at a 45 degree angle. The next one above that, will hold the rod up at a 45 degree angle. And the one after that is another one that holds the rod flat or at a 90 degree angle. So when we weld 1G plate, we want to hold our rod angle right at 10 degrees. As far as the stinger goes, it can be a little bit uncomfortable to have your elbow really high like this as you try to hold that 10 degree angle. So what we can do is we can angle this rod down. That'll make everything a lot more comfortable and the only thing we have to look out for is that we don't get handcuffed, which is our arm gets in the way of our other arm, and now we can't reach the weld because our rod got a lot shorter. Now that we're in 2G, it's really important that we don't get too much rod angle in the direction of travel. So we still want that 10 degrees in the direction of travel, which would be the rod's angle this way. But now we want to point up just a little bit at 10 degrees. So if we bring the rod straight in, we go 10 degrees to the side, 10 degrees down, that's about the perfect rod angle there. On these stands, or in a lot of areas, we'll run into where as the rod gets shorter, our hand starts to bump into the stand. So if that's happening, we can put this rod in the 45 up position, but we don't want to weld at a 45 degree angle like this. We wanna weld at that 10 degree angle, but it's gonna be really comfortable for our hand, and it's gonna keep our hand away from the heat. Uh, it's also perfectly okay to put it at the 90 degree angle, as long as you're not gonna run into a stand or let your gloves get so close that your fingers start smoking from the heat off the weld. Now we're in the 3G position. The 3G position can be really challenging, especially since the bottom of it can run into stuff on the stands. There can be a floor in the way or maybe it's just way too high. My favorite way to weld in the 3G position is with a 45 up angle and then I keep my rod really straight, 10 degrees up, keep the arc length really tight. I usually try to keep my elbows really low and then I just weld 
with my wrist, I flick back and forth a little bit with my wrist on the 3G. Once again, it's totally okay to run the 90 degree position. You might run into where your hand's getting too close to the weld and it's getting too hot as you burn down to the end of the rod though. So now we have it in the 4G position. This weld is going to be made overhead. A couple ways to make this weld. One is we can have the rod in the lightsaber position. The other one, which is my favorite, is that we put it in the 45 up position and then we cock our wrist back a little bit. I wouldn't recommend using the 90 degree position because it can be a lot of strain on the wrist to get it all the way back or you can have to crawl all the way underneath and get sparks down your neck. One thing to remember is that your rod is flexible though it can end up wasting quite a bit of rod. You can give this rod just a little bend like that and now it can be in any position you want. So I like to go that 45 up position and then when I'm down here I really like to try to have my head off to one side if I can see. If I'm down at the root or on the hot pass and I can't see into the bevels, then I stay straight in front of it and I keep my elbows tucked in nice and close to my body and I just bring that straight toward my nose and it's very difficult to see around the arc. So uh, I like to try to get my head as low as I can so that I don't have the arc between me and my puddle because that makes it so I can't see the puddle at all. For fillet welds, everything's going to stay the same as it did for groove welds, all of the rod angles. The only thing to know is that we always want to point the rod right into the toe line of the last weld that we made, and we have to watch out for our weld starting to slip down. So if we want to change where the weld's at a little bit inside of a fillet weld, we can change our rod angle a little bit and uh, just observe how the puddle reacts to our new rod angle. Okay, so for 5G, I have a lot of little tricks that I like to use to get better results on a 5G weld. The first one is if we're making an uphill weld, which means that we start at the bottom of the pipe and we weld up to the top. Then we go to the other side, we start at the bottom and we weld up to the top on that side. I'm going to start in the 45 up position on my stinger. And then when I'm down here and I'm getting lined up with the bottom of the weld, I wanna make sure that my hips are out and not tucked up under the pipe because that crams my face in there too much and it's hard to see. So the next thing I do is I line up the center of the pipe, the bevel, the tip of my rod, the stinger, my wrist, my elbow, and my shoulder all on one plane. So as I start to move, I don't risk moving to one side or the other side. I'm gonna pull straight back to me. Once I lean in to the bottom of the pipe, I try to keep everything close to my body as I can. After I strike up, all I have to do to make this first portion of the weld is slowly bring my wrist back to me and sometimes lean my body back just a little bit. Provided it's a small pipe like this, on bigger pipe, it's gonna get a little more difficult and some of that we're just gonna to have to straight up lay down underneath. Now that I get to the side of the pipe, I never wanna weld past the quarter because that's where I want to stop, measure if I'm level, make sure everything's working right. I move to the 90 degree position in my stinger. Now that I'm on the side of the pipe, I change my position to the 90 degree position in the stinger. I hold my stinger way down on the end and I usually rest my elbow on the pipe or a stand or something that can keep me steady. I almost never weld without having something to keep me steady. And as I hold this stinger down on the end, as I come up this pipe, I'm gonna slowly twist so that my stinger is in line with the weld again. Now, if I'm doing a downhill weld, I like to start out on the top in the down position, 45 down position. Same thing, I like to hold the stinger way down on the end. I like to rest up on the pipe. I like to just drop my wrist and bring the stinger around like that. Sometimes if the pipe's real big, that's not gonna work. So I just get my elbow high in the air. I check that I have the right rod angle and I start making the weld that way on a downhill weld. Bonus fact, what is uphill and what is downhill? Uphill is when we weld from the bottom to the top or up the hill. Downhill is when we weld from the top to the bottom or down the hill. There you have it, there's the GNF positions and rod angles. Be sure to commit these to memory. It's important that you know the names of the positions when you get out into the field. And let us know in the comments, what is your favorite or least favorite welding position and rod angle? I hope this video was helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.